What's going on friends? Behind this menagerie of 3D prints lies the new Anycubic Cobra 2. It's the new FDM printer from, again, our friends at Anycubic. They sent me this out a month early so I can go through all the trials and tribulations so you don't have to. And hopefully by the end of this video, you'll have a good understanding of what this printer is all about, what some of the good points are, and maybe what some of the bad points are as well. Let's get straight on into this one. <laughs> You are watching a master at work. Just before we get into these fantastic prints, I want to thank our video sponsor today, PCBWay.com. PCBWay.com is a reliable and efficient PCB manufacturing company that offers a wide range of PCB services, including prototyping, fabrication, and assembly. They utilize advanced technology and a skilled engineering team to ensure that every PCB order is of the highest quality. With fast turnaround times, competitive pricing, and of course, excellent customer service, PCBWay.com is the go-to destination for engineers and hobbyists looking to bring their innovation and ideas to life. Thank you again, PCBWay. The Anycubic name is synonymous with 3D printing. They are one of the larger manufacturers over in China, and over the past few years, they have put out a den of related FDM products, which include Slivering In, The Viper, Cobra, Cobra Plus, Max, Neo, and Go. And the Cobra 2 as a product feels like a learnt lesson of what previously worked on those models and, well, what didn't. The question, of course, is, is it actually any good? And what are the significant differences between the Cobra, Neo, and Go, and the Cobra 2? Starting off, the X and Y guide system has changed from the regular V-slot wheels to an extrusion impregnated rail with metal guide wheels. It works in the same way as the V-slot, with eccentric nuts just being adjusted to improve the guidance. It'll also avoid any annoying swarf buildup that we tend to get with the common V-slot wheels. This system does make the rails easy to clean, and at this point I don't see any negatives to having them, although I haven't seen these on any printers that I've previously reviewed. I have seen them on the Xtool D1 Pro, which also has a similar guide system. Inside the printer and on the motherboard, we are running a 32-bit motherboard as standard. I suspect we're using TMC 2209s as well. Again, it's pretty standard for most 3D printers now. We have fixed stepper motors on there, so you can't actually change any of those things. Inside the board is a TriGorilla Pro B version 1.0.2. While it might look like the other versions that have come on previous Cobras, it does also now come with a USB-C port instead of the traditional USB-B mail. Also on the front, we have a micro SD and a HC 32F460, which is on the chip, which is assumed to be in a Corex M4 like its predecessors. The Cobra 2 hot end has undergone yet another transformation, with the original compact box being replaced by a new design that exudes a Voron-like aesthetic. The addition of the large part cording fan, which might seem excessive, produces an ominous sound when it kicks in. But it works in conjunction with the direct drive system and block finned cold side setup. Of course, this design has contributed to the increase in speed thanks to its ability to achieve faster melting points. The rest, for the most part, is pretty much the same. We've got the same boring touchscreen with the same boring UI. We've got the gold PEI sheet. We've got a build volume of 220 by 220 by 250. But we also have these two additions. We now have what appears to be a nozzle wipe and a position calibration module, which is on the back of the printer. However, it's unclear on the instructions where to add the G-code for the nozzle wipe, and with the position calibration, I've only used this on its initial setup. Regarding what the true benefits are of these right now, well, I'm a little lost. One of the key contributing factors when buying a new 3D printer is, of course, quality. And it's how you get that quality. Is the machine set up and tuned correctly? And is the file slice right? Well, here's something new. Anycubic have provided a .ini file on the SD card, which can be used with Prusa Slicer. For me, this is a welcome change over the versions of Cura, and to my surprise, the profile is actually really good. So I use Prusa Slicer, or branches thereof Prusa Slicer, much more than I do Cura now. And importing the profile is simple and easy and very clear. All you do is file, import, import config, and that gives you a predefined config that you can use and tune as you please. So it's simple and easy. Let's get to some printing.
Right, so let's take a look at how these prints turned out. Now, overall, the printing process was pretty slick, but there were a couple of things that I did need to tweak in the settings, such as retraction, and also the start and end of the G-code needs a little bit of work, certainly on taller prints, as the hot end basically sits and melts the print. I also had to make some adjustments on the belts and also the bed to get rid of any ringing that was on the prints. And of course, you can find the .ini file for Prusa Slicer on the SD card, along with two benches. One's a 30 minute benchy, the other one is a 38 minute benchy. Uh, one is 0.20, one is 0.28. Uh, both benchies were sliced and were printed at 150 millimeters per second at the absolute maximum. But, but I think with a bit more work you might be able to get things sped up. But all in all the prints look pretty damn good and have met my expectations. Incidentally, the third benchy, which was the green benchy that you saw there that had the uh, deviations on the side of that, uh, that was actually in Cura when I was trying to get some stuff set up. But overall, like I say, the prints that I've printed on this Cobra 2, especially the little rope vase here, um, have been absolutely brilliant. It's important to say that all the prints here are printed at 0.2 layer height, apart from that one benchy which was 0.28, uh, with lightning infill as well. So all of these little prints have come out exceptionally well, um, including this kind of print in vase mode this came out really really nicely and even with a kind of silky finish i've tried to print things in matte and various different types of filaments here uh, all in pla now this was the wolf that i printed that also had quite a significant amount of ringing that's when i really sort of discovered that the belts needed tuning up and it also stopped right at the end of the print and burnt the nose so that was a bit odd so again you know just making sure that the nozzle moves out of the way at the end of the print is um is a must for these things so next, this is the golden pen holder, and you can really see the ringing inside of this print. This was, again, uh, interestingly enough, you can take the PEI sheet off and you can get to the screws. This isn't always the case, but you can see that the CHEP cube printed very, very nicely after I just adjusted the belts and also the bed and the eccentric nuts as well. So we're back to printing really, really nice prints now. As I mentioned earlier, I think the user interface is actually pretty dull and could have used a makeover. However, Anycubic did make some changes to the speed settings. Now you can choose between Sport, Standard and Silent Mode. Sport gives you a boost of 120% while Silent slows you down to 80%. However, in my case, this feature does not seem to be working properly. Each time you put in 120% on Sports Mode, it knocks it back down to 100. And it looks like they've also removed the option to set your print speed to something like 200% if you chose to. So of course I have reported this back to Anycubic support and with a bit of luck perhaps we might see a firmware release that maybe also encourages a user interface upgrade as well. So in closing, what do we actually have here? Well the Cobra 2 is a welcomed upgraded 3D printer with increased speed, but not so fast that it affects quality. In a world of emerging super fast printers, I'm confident that if you're looking for a printer to start out with, Anycubic's range is a good first choice. However, when it comes to innovation and nimbleness inside such a competitive marketplace, many may choose an option that allows for a higher printing temperature, in turn allowing you to use a greater choice of filaments. Now while I do like the changes that have been made to this printer, I wonder if it's enough to get people excited to print at just over twice the speed of the previous models. One of Anycubic's standout elements is the availability of products on sites such as Amazon. Sales and promotions on a good lineup of products make the Cobra 2 a valuable time-saving machine which is easy to work on and maintain. Okay, so there we go. Two of the best printers that I think are a part of the Anycubic range up until now have been the Anycubic Neo due to the direct drive system and of course the Max due to its bed size. But I will say, I think the Anycubic Cobra 2 certainly has the advantage over that smaller machine. Guys, let me know what you think about this machine in the comments. Are you gonna order one? What do you think about Anycubic and the direction that they're going into at the moment? Um, hopefully, this is a roaring success and I really hope that it is. Thank you to Anycubic, thank you to PCBWay.com and thank you once again for watching. Like and subscribe and we'll see you next time. Bye for now. You are watching a master at work.